have a whole bunch of have a whole bunch of announcements. So uh, let me run through the announcements or reminders, and then I'll show you a couple of things here that I've got. So don't forget, this is the time of year. If you haven't done a new membership class, you want to be doing those kind of things, getting that going. Uh, baptisms, uh, for sure, want to be headed that direction. And don't forget to preach on the call, uh, making sure that you're giving your folks in your churches a chance to respond to the call, whether that's full-time Sunday school or small groups or maybe full-time in ministry following you, okay? Then uh, make sure on your Easter events, one of the things you need to make sure that you're doing, if you're doing Easter events, make sure you are getting names of people who are coming to the church for the Easter egg hunt or whatever you have to do. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to have a drawing for something and, and have them fill out uh, paperwork for the drawing, the cards, and then you get that information and you can use it to contact them later. Then um, after Easter is come and see, we you should have a receive a video today by email from Ange. And then on Facebook, there is another, or the same video is on Facebook. So you can uh, send that out to your church or show it at your church, whatever you want to do. Uh, Thursday uh, with uh, Mike's uh, group and Selena's group, we have PLT in Rogersville. So that's 10 o'clock. So if you're in one of those groups, hope you can join us. The singles are in April 28th, 9th and 30th are at CTR for their yearly event. And then don't forget about May, using May as a strong month. May is always a good month to use. Baby Day can be your first Sunday, second day's Mother's Day, third day's Grad Day. And those are all events you can invite people into your church. And if you do, if you work it right, May can be a huge month because grandmas and grandpas are going to come to Baby Day, and aunts and uncles. And of course, Mother's Day uh, is almost, the, the stats are telling us that Mother's Day is becoming one of the largest uh, Sundays in the church world. And then, of course, Grad Day, if you have grads, honor them, get the families in, make it a big deal um, for them. All right. Then, of course, VBS is coming, camps are coming up. Um, so uh, if you're online tonight and if you're interested, uh, I'm going to buy you so this, you'll send an email to angie tonight if you're interested i'm going to buy you the journals for the uh, mobilize mobilization mobilization of a half million nazarenes the journal that we did last year that led us into pentecost in the general church okay we're going to do it again and if you would like journals for your church all right um i'm going to buy you they're 15 dollars for a pack of 10 and if you, if you email her tonight, I'm going to send you a link tomorrow, and I'm going to buy you those packets if you want them, okay? So if you don't want them, that's fine, but I am going to, I'm going to do that for you guys. I appreciate you guys coming in and watching tonight, being part of it. If you want them, we're going to buy them for you, okay? Then we sent out an email yesterday uh, about that this music if you don't have live music at your church all right so this is a group that has now, now don't need anybody to have a heart attack on me but it's piano organ and a choir music in the background okay and um you can cut you can do it by split channels and then you can also show your powerpoints up on the screen and you can sing with uh the hymns all right. So I know some of you are like, no, not a chance in the world. Others of you are going, hey, that's great. And then others of you are going, hey, we, you know, some churches are doing um, that we're going to, is they're doing both. So they do like two courses and then they do like two hymns. Um, so there's different varieties there. But if you're interested in this and you don't have any live music and you're wanting to go with that, um, we'll buy you the thumb drive and they'll send us some hymns, hymnals. And you guys can go after it that way too. Okay, so just an option. Um, and if you've signed up for it, great. And if you haven't, that's great too. No pressure either way. All right, everybody good? Lots of stuff tonight. Um, so let me jump in. I'm, I'm going to run through this. What this is tonight is uh, a few months ago, I reread Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits. All right, so what I've done is I went back through took extensive notes. Then I brought those notes back into tonight's notes. 
And so I'm going to run over them. Some of you will have heard these, uh, and it might have been years ago. Some of you will be, you will have never heard this. And some of you will have heard, you're going to hear the, these thoughts, and you're going to wonder, I wonder who came up with that. And tonight you're going to go, oh, that's the guy. So um, we're going to work through that. So you have a, instead of me trying to fill, have a fill-in sheet, I gave you my, my talking sheet, okay? And you'll just fill it in and you have all the material. So actually you have more material than we normally give out because I think you have five or six pages of notes tonight. And um, so we'll run through it. You can ask questions, stop me, wave at me, and I'll stop and uh, do whatever I can to help out and understand it, okay? So let's start with um, let's start with number one, which is the word proactive. That was a huge word in the early '90s when this all came out. This word proactive it, it was not it was not a word that was normally used. And so what Kobe does is he takes this thought process and he talks uh, in in this chapter. He talks about Viktor Frankl. Do all of you know who Viktor Frankl is? Okay. So let me back up. So Viktor Frankl was a counselor, and in his counseling, he was a victim of the Nazi regime. And while he was in prison, he said, I, 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 don't, have to, I don't have to be down, and I don't have to be defeated because I'm in prison. I'm going to make a choice today, and today I'm going to, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be a privileged that I'm in this situation. So, so Victor Frankl went against everything that he had taught. If you studied Freud at all, Freud talks about that you are formed by, by your, your environment and that you can't escape it. It's going to show up no matter what you do. Even if you try to submerge it, it will show back up. And, and, and Frankl comes along and says, uh, I don't buy that. I think you can be different. And that, so what he did was, what Kobe is saying, Frankel did was, he was proactive in thinking, I don't have to be created or formed this way. I can make a choice to go this way. Now, in our theology, now Kobe's not Nazarene, but in our theology, we love that idea of free will. So he has, he made a choice that I'm going to do not be controlled by the Nazis. I'm not going to be controlled by prison or my environment, but I'm going to make a choice in all of that. So, so Kobe is saying to us that we have to look at our circumstances and we, we, we have the choice to let our circumstances dictate, dictate to us how we respond, or we could respond ahead of that. And there's a guy by the name of uh, the Apostle Paul who modeled this really well for us. In, because what he said was, even though I'm in prison, and even though I'm in chains, and even though I've been beat, and even though I've been, I will rejoice. Uh, we have a couple of guys that uh, started singing in the midst of being in prison in chains. So we have this wonderful choice, and you have a choice to make on how you respond, where you're at, and the circumstances you're at, to respond Proactively, in other words, be ahead of the game. You're thinking proactively. You're not behind the game. You're ahead of the game. And I will, I will be thankful. I will rejoice. I will be a positive person. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to let life dictate to me um, how I feel or what I think. Okay, that he didn't mean for it to be that, but that might preach. Just saying. All right. Number two, begin with the end in mind. Um, in, in our in today's uh, education system, we have the teach to test, or teach for the test, or however you, wherever your school phrases that. And so they, you know, sometimes some of the schools are giving the test out, showing the kids what it's going to be. Then they teach for that time period, and then they take the test. And so they're teaching for the test. And so he's he's talking about beginning with the end in mind. So. A few uh, months ago, we had a visitor here, and he talked to us about creating a life plan. And here's how he started out saying what about creating a life plan. He said, so we're all going to die. What? He, once said, he said, I want you to write down right now, what do you want on your tombstone? Go ahead, everybody. You know, he had this all written down. What do you want on your tombstone? 
He said, why do you want people to talk about you? What do you want them to say about you at your funeral? And then he waited. And then he said, okay, if that's what you want said about you, how are you going to live your life so that is said about you? And so that's a good, a good understanding for us is to say, how's that going to happen for us? And how are we going to work within that? So he gives uh, the four the four issues or the four areas. It's security, guidance, wisdom, and power. Okay. And you probably already read it. All right. So in the spiritual, so for us in the church, we have to add the fifth one, and it has to be spiritual. You can talk about these four, and we can have great conversations about these four. But, uh, but our principles and our priorities have got to be based upon a spiritual foundation, okay? I, I appreciate the four that, that Kobe is talking about, and I'm not trying to judge Kobe. I don't know his journey with the Lord at all. But I can say this, that for us, we should have a fifth area. And that when we talk about what do I want my life to end like, it, we should be talking about spiritual things into our journeys, okay? Number three. The principle of personal management. Now, this chart um, is one that he created, and when it when he came out with this, this thing, this chart was just it exploded everywhere. Everybody was talking about it. churches, businesses, schools. It was in every place you could turn. This thing was everywhere. Okay, it's a it's a perfect model. Now we've seen it a lot, but back then when he first came out with it, it was brand new. So if you look at your at your look at your box, you had the urgent, the not urgent, okay, up at the tops, and then on the side you have not important, important. And so what what was said and what if if you were teaching, um, like for instance when Covey and uh, what a company called Franklin Planners, uh, which is which comes out of the name Benjamin Franklin and, I, and how he planned. And so a company was called Frank, the Franklin Planner. Covey and them bought together. So now we have what's called the, the Covey Franklin or the Franklin Covey Planner. And out of that is this chart. So he says, look at the things in your life and figure out what is most important and what is least important. What's urgent and what's not urgent. And here's the catch. People coming into your life will always see their need as the top left. Okay? They're, when they call you, it's top left. Okay? If you have a moment to evaluate it, you might put it at the bottom right. And then that's when you have to say, and it's okay to say this, it's okay to say, hey, you know, I can't, I can't see you tonight. You know, they want to meet you at church or something. Hey, I can't do that tonight, but tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, I've got some time if you'd like to do that. I can make that work, okay? And what I'm amazed at is, I'm amazed at people who thought they were top left when I when I created a space for my family and for me, that when I put them at the bottom on the right-hand side over there, that it's not that urgent. We can, we can work with it, but it's not that important. It's that it was just fine, okay? Their marriage actually lasted and the kids didn't kill each other and, and on it goes. So you guys have all been in those situations. If, if not, you will be, okay? Okay. So in your own on your own personal journey, look at that chart and say, okay, what do I have to do so that I, I can keep things in that top left box that need to stay in the top left box? So where where, you know, at what priority is board meetings? What priority is church? What priority is counseling? What priority is time with your what your husband or your wife? Uh, and the list goes on. So this box will help you dictate that um in a, in a in a powerful way anybody got any questions on that one because that one is to me is really good you know when it first came out i was overwhelmed with that but it's really really helpful all right number four the principle of interpersonal leadership so this is leading from the inside it's talking about how how do you determine um, your commitments and issues in your own life. So you can see the bottom is courage, low to high, and consideration, low to high, okay? So this has to do with personalities, um, how you're working with people, uh, how key issues come into your life. 
And you'll see here in a little bit, he will merge this with uh, number six, uh, principle number six. So principle four is when I'm working with you and I, and I give or take in situations, uh, am I going to live in the win-win or am I going to live in the lose-win? Is somebody always going to lose when I'm dealing with people? Is it going to be a lose-lose or is it going to be a win-lose? In other words, they win, I lose. Or I lose, they win. You got to, and you have to figure that box out. Okay, so your consideration, your courage, your courage to stand up for yourself, the courage to make good decisions, the courage to lead well in your environment, I think, are really, really important. You can see uh, there. Um, what I've done is I created page numbers for you. So if you if you have the book or you get the book, you can look on the page numbers on the topics that we're talking about. Okay, so uh, that if that helps you out. But you look at the the one that says uh, page two thirty three. You can it says first see the problem from the other point. Secondly, identify the key issues. Third, determine what results. And number four, identify possible new solutions. Okay. A guy uh, who was the USC president uh, at USC uh, wrote a book, and in it he said because Kobe is writing about that. Um, there's four categories. And Covey pushed back on that and said, why can't we always have a win? Why does it have to be a lose-lose? Why can't you have a win in there all the time? And so it's a great question to ask. And it probably determines on how you operate. Will you be, will you allow, will you listen to people long enough to figure out an option in all of that? Okay. Number five is seek first to understand and then to be understood. Uh, if you have a wife like mine or you're into music, uh, that line sounds just like an old, old, old song. And my wife got to sing that song uh, to me. It's, it, it's a prayer that's turned into a song. And uh, seek to be understood and seek to understand. So when we talk about that empathy issue, and how that works. And um, so uh, this one is hard for a lot of people because if you're going to live in five, you have to be a listener. You, you have to not talk. And for some people, that is extremely difficult because they want to butt into conversations. Because what, what we have a tendency to do is we, we think, when we butt in, when I was reading... Um, some stuff here recently, about a year ago, and it was hard on me because I realized, okay, Phil, we're, this book is talking up to you. Is when I butt in, what I'm think, what I'm saying is that my thoughts and my uh, vocabulary is more important than yours. So I have worked hard at, even though I have a thought formulating, it's like just wait, <laughs> just wait, and if. And if you're really bad at it, it's like, just wait. <laughs> and the third time is like, oh, my word, I want to jump in on this so bad. <laughs> okay. So th that's what we've done. Now, he goes in, in this chapter, he talks about, and I love this part. He talks about, so uh, we have we have verbal communication, and then we have nonverbal communication. So he says in this chapter, and, and I think it's pretty much um, across the board, 10% of all communication is verbal. All right. 30% is represented by sounds, the sounds that we make, and 60% is our body language. In other words, what he's trying to say is that most of our language is done by body language. So if you don't think that's the case, just tie your hands up next Sunday morning and see how well you do preaching. You'll find out, okay, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and and if, you've watched, if you're watching Stephen Manley and he can't use his hands, you just lost half the message. We, we, we have laughed so much with him. When he first came out, I was buying the cassette tapes. And uh, that was the big, you know, you're in the Manly Club or whatever. And I was buying the, man, I wanted to be like him. And uh, I don't, if I don't know if I ever told you the story, I tried to preach two messages like him. That was a flop. I learned really quick. I'll let him be Steve Manley. And I probably ought to learn how to be Phil Rhodes. So anyway, so... I was listening to his tapes, but if you watched him preach, he would say, and, 
And then he looks at something and you know, you if you're there, you know what he's talking about. You finish the sentence. But if you're on a cassette tape, you're like, well, what'd he say? What do you what do you look at? What'd he do? You know? So I finally had to quit because I was like, I'm losing half of the message. I have no idea what he's talking about. You know, of course, everybody in the church that they were recording, they all knew exactly where he was at. So anyway, nonverbal is really uh, a large part of our conversation, part of our conversation. Number six, principle of creative cooperation. This goes back to the win-win, okay? Now, it, if you have not read yet The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Lynchoni, Patrick Lynchoni, all right? I want to highly recommend right here that you do that. Um, if you've not read it, you can take your board through it. So I'm working with some pastors right now. We're, we're working on Darren Brown's book. And some of them the other day said, well, could we take our uh, board through Darren Brown's book? And I'm like, yes. It's called the book Shift. It's a great book. And um, so you can do that. This Patrick Lynchoni's book, Five Dysfunctions of a Team, you could do the same thing. You can take your team through it. And his number one, the number one dysfunction is, and you're seeing it on this chart, is trust. If you don't have trust on your board, trust in your church, trust on your team, you're going to have real problems. And so that's what Kobe is saying here is trust. And then once you, you know you have the trust and then you have the cooperation. And if you can get both of those working where they trust you and they cooperate with you and you're leading them, uh, then you can you can get up. You can take that thing up that chart and get out to the win win category. All right. The last chart on that on that page is how some of us live life. <laughs> we have an idea and so does somebody else. And we're like, well, well, you're not listening to me. And the other person's going, you haven't listened to a word I said. Now, how many of you have had that argument with your spouse? I'm guilty, all right? So I'm just saying, this is a perfect model of when you have two forces that are coming together and neither give, okay, that's not a win, all right? But when you can work together and move it up the chart, then you have your win, all right? Number seven is sharpen the saw. Uh, to me, this is always a funny one uh, when he was, because I'd heard, I've heard him talk and, and give these. So if you go to the bottom chart first, okay? It's the learn, commit, do. Learn, commit, do. And what he's saying is, as you learn, and then you commit, and then you do, especially on these five, these seven habits, then it begins to create a great spiral for you, and, and you're, you're creating a vacuum, and it's a good thing, okay? So he gives you the four areas up there that he's talking about in this chapter, the physical, social, emotional, social, emotional, spiritual, and, and mental. OK, so let me back that up and let me say this. I, I cut wood in the winter. In fact, is I'm going to go cut some wood here in, in a few days uh, for a year or two down the road. One of the things I've learned is. After I cut about. Uh, two tanks at the most of gas, my chain gets dull. It gets dull because of the, of the amount of wood that I'm going through, all right? If I keep that chain on there, I can cut wood. But the chips that, that I'm cutting that's coming out of the log from the chain get smaller and smaller and smaller. So finally, it'll become like dust. And what I, what I find is I can spend the same amount of energy and I get about a third of the work done when my chain is dull, okay? Now, if I stop and I sharpen the chain, I just touch it up and I sharpen it, all of a sudden I'm back to cutting full speed, all right? So here's what some of us do in life. We go and we go and we go, and we end up with a dull chain, and we're spending an immense amount of energy, but the production rate is very small. So what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to stop and sharpen your chain so that your production amount for the amount of energy that you wait or that you put out is the best amount 
possible. Does that all make sense to everybody? I know that's a weird illustration, but it's the best one I can come up with to describe this issue, okay? So in your life, the physical, the social, emotional, the spiritual, and the mental, okay? It's, it's, it's a chance for you to look at those four things in your life and are you sharp in them? So for instance, if, if you're a person that watches TV all the time or you always have your phone on, but you're never processing and you're never reading and maybe you're never journaling, okay? then you're going to be low on, on the mental one. Your blade is going to be dull. All right. If you come over to the social emotional, if you, um, if you, if you never empathize with anybody, I mean, you never look at somebody's life and go, man, that I bet that really hurts. If you don't, if you don't do that, if you don't have the ability to do that, your chain is dull. Okay. If you're not exercising, if you're not watching what you're eating, if you're kind of, uh, you're letting stress just consume you, then your blade is dull. And the last one is spiritual. And that's us. If there's things in your life that you're battling, you're not taking care of, and you're not spending time with the Lord, your blade will be dull. You'll, you'll give out the same amount of energy, but it'll be about a third of the production. You've got to make sure that you've sharpened the saw in your own life in all these four categories. Okay, so that's his, that's his seven habits that he talks about. And I think they're, they're really, really helpful to us um, in that. So any questions or anything I can clarify tonight? You have a lot of information I gave to you. I didn't read all the quotes, but any, any questions real quick? I didn't catch number six. I couldn't hear you. Okay. Principle of creative cooperation. Creative cooperation. Anything else from anybody? Okay, let me, I want to end with this. Uh, you guys know the uh, the uh, secular song, Danny Boy, the Irish tune, oh, Danny Boy, okay? Um, a guy by the name of uh, Steve Adams years ago took that song, rewrote it. Dottie Rambo got involved in the whole thing. And uh, she kind of took this song to the next level. And these are the words. If you can hear the tune, I won't sing it for you. Uh, but um, let me read to you the words tonight, okay? Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary. To view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous grace, the grace that caught my falling soul. For he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. If not for grace, my soul would be a drifting ship with no safe harbor from the angry waves. But Calvary's cross shines brightly through the darkest storm. Don't you love that line? But Calvary's cross shines brightly through the darkest storm, and just in time, his mercy rescues me. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. And then another old song that fits into this. Amazing grace, oh, how sweet the sound that saved a poor sinner like me. Though once I was lost, yet now I am found. Though I was blinded, now I see. And it's all because of God's amazing grace. Because on Calvary's mountain, he took my place. And someday, some glorious morning, I shall see him face to face. All because of God's amazing grace. Then with of the ransomed around God's throne, we'll praise our Redeemer and King. We'll tell how his mercy for sin did atone, though through countless ages this song will, will ever sing. And it's all because of God's amazing grace, because on Calvary's mountain he took my place. And someday, some glorious morning, 
I shall see him face to face, all because of God's amazing grace. I want to live in that grace. Um, I, I, I know that I don't deserve that, but I want to live in it, and I want to flow in it, and I want my life to be in it. I've been reminded this week, and uh, I had a, a, a book that's an old, old, old book, and I've been reading segments in it the last several weeks, and I will remind you again that tomorrow's, today's manna will not be sufficient for tomorrow's needs. I have to have tomorrow's manna tomorrow, and I have to have today's manna today. So in your own journey, in living in grace, go to the Lord so you can have the manna for today and understand that the manna for today will not suffice for tomorrow. You'll have to have new manna that you go out and get and bring it into the house and partake of it, and it will sustain you in the days ahead. All right? Jesus, we thank you for your amazing grace. I thank you for each of the individuals that are here tonight with us. And I pray that somehow, even as the ones who will later come on later and watch it recorded and so on, I pray that this day would be filled with your grace. I pray that they would extend grace to those around them and they would receive grace from you. Sometimes it's really hard to receive your grace, your forgiveness, your mercy. So tonight, Help us to receive it, Help us all, to open our hearts to receive it. And I pray that you'll bless each one who are, who are on tonight in a special way. I pray that something that's said tonight would key, and maybe it would be something, a tool that they could use in their ministry that would help them in the days, weeks, months, years ahead. So tonight, we just give to you our lives. We give to you our dreams and our hopes. We pray that you will be um, thrilled with our offering and that uh, you would use it for your glory. Now may your richness of our the relationship, may the richness of your relationship in our lives overwhelm us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for joining tonight. I appreciate everybody's time. I know everybody's got a thousand things going on and those who are watching from recording, um, it's, it's, I know you'll be watching later on. So God bless all of you. And, uh, if I can do something for you, you let me know. Okay. So I want to stay on in case somebody needs to talk with me, but uh, you guys have a great evening and, uh, it's been raining here all day, but maybe we'll see some sun here real soon. And, uh, we'll see some trees burst out in green. All right. Good night, you guys. <laughs>